Hello students, welcome to our class. My name is Brenda and I'll be taking you through entrepreneurship and communication. A uh, topic known as business communication. And just like we know, communication is just passing information from one person to another. So in business, we always communicate uh, towards each and every person that we meet. So communication is one of the factors that help us to grow our businesses. So, uh, so communication is passing of information from one person to another information. From one person person to another so also to advertise your commodities you have to communicate to your clients and the customer so communication is very effective and vital in their uh, in their business uh, uh, in the business world so why communication the reasons why uh, communication is used in business and we have uh, the communication is used to provide information for decision making. Okay, so why should we communicate for decision making? So this is one of the reasons why we should communicate uh, with our customers or with any other person around us. For, so for decision making, you can always advertise your goods to the customer so for him or her to make a decision on commodity A or commodity B he must understand uh, the he must understand the advantages of buying commodity A rather than buying commodity B so uh, communication is used to provide decision uh, information for decision making so the second one the communication, why do we communicate? Is to inform inform our customers about the existence of a certain product. So as a businessman, uh, you must communicate to your custom, customers about your new products so that they can always um, buy. So that's another reason. We also have another one, uh, another reason why we communicate in business. Uh, Another one is to warn against specific actions. So mm, you might be selling knives to your customers, the, the kitchen knives. So for them to know how to properly use them, you must take caution and tell them the, the specific actions to take, like where to place the knives, they should not put the knives anywhere. Maybe they can cut themselves to properly handle the knives. So uh, communication is used to pass uh, information or to warn against an action. Okay. So another one, to we use communication as business people to advise our customers. So we advise our customers through communicating to them, telling them good A is better than good B. So we advise them on on how how they want to use. Let's say we are making tables and we have kitchen tables, study tables, all those tables. So the customer wants a kitchen table. So you will be there to advise on what type of table the customer should purchase. So that's one uh, reason why we communicate to advise. We also have another one to impact the knowledge and skills to the to our customers. So to impact the knowledge and skills about the usage of a certain product. So that's another reason. We also communicate to receive or give feedback uh, to to maybe our employees or um, our the people helping us in the business. 
So we always communicate to 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 receive. Maybe someone has um, a knowledge or skill that you don't have, so you communicate so that you can uh, you can receive feedback from them. So that's another reason. We also communicate to achieve uh, to achieve teamwork. So with teamwork, we have to communicate for us to be effective in our business. So with teamwork, we must communicate. So communication is one of the best teamwork approach for us to, to perform well in our business. So those are the main, main reasons why we usually communicate in business so business communication we are also going to look about uh, uh, to look at the past principle in communication the past right the past the past this past the past principle in communication the past principle in communication. So the past principle, so we will like, uh, we'll write our past in in letters, uh, in, numer in letters, vertically, so that we can see what we mean by the word past, the past principle. So the past principle, uh, the past, the P, uh, on the on the past means purpose so means purpose so the p means purpose p means purpose and that means it's the reason for communicating so we always have a reason why why why, why we why we should communicate uh, in business so we have a purpose that p stands for a purpose and the main reasons that we've given here are the purposes of communicating in business. So the P is stands for purpose. A stands for audience. A stands for audience. Audience. The people that we are addressing. The people we are talking to. So those are our audience. The customers, be it the 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 employees. Okay. So they are the audience from the past. Those. Uh, are our audience. We have S, the first S in the past. This is the structure. So uh, how is the structure of your communication? How have you arranged your communication? Okay, does it have the, the heading, the body, and the finishing part? So the structure. We also have the style. The style. Is your style of communicating uh, being understood by the receiver? So it's up to you to to know what style you should use to engage your customers or to engage your uh, surrounding community that you are selling products to. So the purpose uh, we usually use the past principle to solve some maybe conflict conflicts maybe a customer has come to buy your product but now uh, the customer uh, the customer realized that the product he or she bought is not of good quality of the high quality so there will be some issues among you so you need to use the purpose uh, from the past principle to communicate that so the purpose helps to solve conflicts the audience that means to whom are you addressing okay what language will you use what channel uh, what channel of communication will you use here yeah. so the audience and you should also know the age of the people whom you are talking to the level of your communication should matter so you should adhere to this the age how you can communicate to a to a 
um, to a 10 year old is not the way you can communicate to a 50 year old. So the audience, uh, yeah, the audience. We also have the structures. How are you introducing your business? How? And what body did you put? Uh, what does your business uh, deal with? So that's the structure, structure from the past principle. Uh, we also have the style, style. How will you structure your language? The style, how will you structure? Will you use the verbal communication or you will use the, uh, the written communication which is uh, printing of brochures to give your customers? So the first principle deals with uh, all these, the four. We have purpose, audience, structure, and the style. So this is basically the, the past principle. So as you communicate, all communication should be clear. So my good students, at the back of your mind, uh, always remember that when you communicate, all communication should be clear. So we'll also look at some few things to guide you through the communication and we have number one the communication just like we've said it should be clear should look at the clarity the clarity of your communication the clear the clarity are you using a simple language okay so one of the things to notice there is that you should always use a simple language also you outline your ideas you outline your ideas in a way that people will understand also we have another one we have another one which is you should your communication should be complete the completeness are you to the point did your point reach from where you wanted it to be so the com the com uh, completeness the completeness of your completeness of your communication is your communication complete so that's another one we also have uh, correct uh, your communication also should be correct are you talking to people to your people the right thing are you telling them what they are supposed to know? So it should be correct. You should have done your research and what you give to people will be correct. Is it timely? Is it timely? Maybe you have an offer. You are selling your products at a discounted price. You have an offer. And the offer goes like let's say in the month of the whole of september the whole of september you are selling your products at a discount so you should always communicate clearly to your customer to let them know let's uh, let's say from the month of august you tell them we have offers as from next month we also have the like the month, the same same month, you should always remember to uh, to advertise to them that there is uh, there is an offer. So that means your information should be timely. Okay. So my good students, you should have the timely information. So with the, uh, with your business, you will go far so uh, we have some systems of communication uh, how uh, the format of communication so how how the communication is passed from one person to the other I just draw it here just draw that that system that the way message is transferred from one person to the other. So we have the sender, we have the sender and the receiver on this end, the receiver. 
We have the sender and the receiver. We have the sender and the receiver. So, uh, from the, when the message comes from the sender, goes to the receiver, there is a channel that it passes. It passes through a channel. And in this, we will have, uh, this we will call it encoder. Encode uh, from the sender to the receiver. We also have the receiver on the other end. Uh, we have the decode. Yeah, the receiver on the other end receive the information. Uh, just right here uh, on the channel, we have the feedback. Maybe the sender has asked a question. And, and he, uh, sorry. Feedback, this is a feedback. Feedback. Maybe the sender has asked a question and he, he needs the receiver to respond. So the receiver will, will give out his or her feedback. So the feedback will also be here on this system. So when communication is verbal or through phones, we will use a channel. So, <coughs> sorry. So there is a channel, the channel of communication. Maybe they talk through phones or through the email. So the, there is a channel of communication. And this, uh, this decode means that the receiver has, uh, has already, uh, has already gotten the information and the receiver intends to derive the intended uh, the intended me intended meaning so he knows so he knows what feedback to give to the sender so my good students that's the system that we only always use in communication so the channel of, of communication can be either oral or verbal the feedback also can be either oral or verbal so with that said my good students we are also going to look at the levels of communication so communication is said to be complete it's said to be com complete when there is when the, there is a feedback which is received when there is a feedback the communication is said to be uh, complete communication is said to be complete so we will look at the levels of communication the levels levels of communication So the levels of communication, and we have uh, like five of them. We have like five of the levels of communication. And we have number one, which is intrapersonal, 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 intra. Intrapersonal communication. So this is one level of communication whereby you talk to yourself. Okay? <laughs> that means you talk to your to yourself. So as a an entrepreneur, you ask yourself, in this business, what should I do that is unique to from my competitors? So you ask yourself and you you find your answers in your mind so it's called intrapersonal communication it's inside you you communicate with yourself with your mind so intrapersonal we also have another one which is extra personal extra extra personal communication 
Uh -huh. Extra personal communication, whereby you talk to animals. You talk to animals. Either maybe it's your pet. Uh -huh. So that's extra personal. The the mm -hmm. the animal is not a human being. So it's it's kind of extra. It's an animal. That's it. So speaking to an animal, that's extra personal communication. We also have interpersonal. Inter. We have the inter. Inter. Interpersonal communication. My good students, we have uh, intra, extra, interpersonal. So they have the different spelling. So interpersonal is whereby you talk to an organization. Okay? Even in meetings, we use the interpersonal communication. We talk with our fellow, uh, with, with our fellow people. So that's uh, in meetings, we have the interpersonal communication. We also have group communication. The group communication, group communication. So through discussions, uh, through discussions, we talk, we use the group communication, either two or more people, either two or more people. An example is when we talk uh, online, on Zoom, on Zoom classes. So that is group communication. We also have a uh, group communication that means two or more people. We also have organizational communication. Organization. So this this is communi communication whereby uh, people in an organization they speak the same language uh, in which they all understand one another. So these are the main levels of communication that we have, the main levels of communication that we have. We also have the factors that determine communication, the factors that determine communication. The factors, let's look at the factors The factors, factors uh, that determine, that determine, determine communication. So these factors, we we'll look at them. We have the leadership skills. We have the leadership skills. So, as a leader, you must fully express yourself. You must fully expre ex express yourself. So, we have the leadership skills. They are also a factor that determine communication. The leadership skills, once you have the leadership skills, you should always also communicate as a leader. You should communicate as a leader. The leadership skills. We also have the duration of existence of a group. Duration. When you are talking to a group, duration of existence. So when you are talking to a group, you should always have in mind the uh, existence of that group. Are the people learning from you? Are we a new group that we need to learn? We need to ask questions, okay? So the duration of the existence of the group you are talking to, you are communicating to, so that's one factor. We also have the members, the members' perception of the group. So what's uh, members' perception? Are you communicating the same language? Members' perception. Maybe it's a group. Huh? Are you communicating the same language? Do you have common views and object objectives? So 
the members' perception. We also have the self-image. Another factor determining communication is self-image. Self-image. So that, that's understandable. We also have the social status of the people. The social status. So the people you are communicating to. Hmm? The social status of the people. Maybe you are talking to a customer. Customers of a certain community. So you should have this factor. The social status of the people, of the people you are talking to, of the people you are giving your information to. So these are the main factors. And we also have another one, my good students. So you should check on the other one, the six and the seven, just the two, uh, to add on to that, the, uh, to add on to the factors that determine communication. So as a good student, always keep uh, doing research. Okay? So when the tutor gives you a percentage, you should always find another. So the two, just find them. So we will head on to our next uh, subtopic, which is the factors to consider when choosing a way of communicating. When choosing a way of communicating, what should you look at? As a good business student, what should you look at? You cannot just wake up one day and start communicating without knowing what you should communicate or what to consider. So let's know the factors to, do. Factors to consider when choosing a way of communication. So, number one. Number one, the factors. Factors to consider. When choosing, choosing a way of communication. So, the factors to consider. So, yeah. The factors we need to consider as you communicate, what should you look at? Huh? Number one is cost efficient. Cost efficient. Cost efficient. Let's say you want to send a you want to send a letter to the US department. So to send your letter. Uh, you need to look at the cost. Okay? You need to look at the cost. Is the cost of sending the letter much more than the cost of you passing your message online? So you should look at the cost. Uh, the cost, the cost efficient as a factor to consider when choosing uh, a method of communicating or a way of communicating. We have another one, confidentiality. Confidentiality. My good student, uh, confidentiality is also another factor to consider. Huh? Will your message reach uh, the way you want it to be? The way you want it to reach is the verbal or non-verbal communication a better way of passing your message so confidentiality we also have the details of the message the details the details of the message the details the information you want to pass across huh? is it too short or too long to to, to be passed to be passed also you need to check on the the important the important information you need to pass to the uh, receiver to the receiver on the other end so we also have number four the target audience the target audience whom are you talking to hmm? whom should you address when uh, 
with, with your information or with your message so the target audience we also have the reliability we have reliability reliability this is a factor okay is your uh, is your is your communication reliable huh okay reliability is also a factor to consider let's say you want to send some photos to someone hmm? so you should look at the reliable method you may you might choose either to print the photos and send them uh, like parcel or you should send them online so reliability is also another factor to consider we also have the agency agency how urgent is your message agency is it needed like right now like immediate with immediate effect so the agency is also a factor to consider then we also have another one availability of a medium availability of a medium of medium so which medium will you choose in your communication so availability of a medium we have distance the distance between the sender and the receiver the distance also is one of the factors to consider the distance hmm? the place where you want your message to reach maybe you want to you want to have entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurship classes you want to teach some of your employees huh? you want to teach them about entrepreneurship okay so should look at the uh, the distance the distance will they be able will you call the meeting in a hall huh? then you use your voice or you can use the microphone so it's upon you to see the distance where the message will reach. Also, the subject matter. Okay? Let's say you want to address about uh, a certain indiscipline uh, worker. You want to, to address him or her. So, will you address him or her in, in the public or you will call him or her in your office? So, the subject matter. We also have the legal requirements. The legal requirements. Huh? Of sending your of sending your message, not passing your information. So, and have this at the back of your mind is that the oral communication is usually used to send uh, urgent messages. Okay, the urgent messages are passed through the oral communication. The oral communication. So we have the some few types of communication that we will look at the other time when we the other time in our next lesson which is the oral communication the written communication and also the audio vision so my good students thank you so much for your time and hope you've learned something from the what business communication is and the factors to consider the uh, the factors to consider uh, to determine the way of communication also the system the system of communi how communication is passed from one person to the other from the sender to the receiver so i hope you've learned something and thank you for uh, for being there for for listening to, uh, for attending the lesson and let's meet on our other lesson thank you Bye.